one time at the lunch break, my friend took me for a ride in his GTI and I was hooked. I fell in love with those small little cars with great power and great handling and I decided to get one. This is going to be the last ST video I make unless something major comes up. I don't want to make a hundred videos on every single bolt on this car. I don't want to make a video like this. What's up you guys? Here are the five things I wish I knew before I bought my ST. Or like this. What's up you guys? Here are the five things I absolutely hate about my folks ST. I mean, seriously, if you hate your car so much, just get rid of it. You shouldn't suffer because of a piece of metal. I've had my ST for about one and a half years now and certainly there are things I've learned along the way because I never own a turbocharged car. I know there are tons of videos on the internet about the Focus ST and I'll do my best to try to avoid things that have been already said about this car. We'll talk about its value first. I bought my new from a dealership because I was greatly concerned with all those people on the internet modifying them right away from the factory with cheap tunes, exhaust and low value and so on. If I would buy it now, I would go with the used one. As it turns out, not many folks out there have the money for good upgrades. So you can find an SD with little things done to it and bring it back to stock condition. I don't really regret buying it new. I really enjoy those first thousand miles with all the restrictions and it was just fun. For many people, a Focus SD is an entry to the performance car world because it's cheap and it's accessible. You all know by now that if you want a better interior, you'll go with a GTI. If you want more space, you'll probably go and buy a Civic SI, the new one. And if you're a Subaru fan, well, you're gonna buy a Subaru. Closest thing to the Focus ST price-wise is the new Civic SI. I was actually considering one. The rest of competitors are pretty pricey. And it was always like that until the Veloster N came out. And this is when things started to get interesting. You really can't complain anymore about being far from the performance of a Focus RS, the Civic Type R, the Golf R, or Subaru STI. Now you have the Veloster. And if you're out for a hot hat, you should definitely look into Veloster N and I'll tell you shortly why. Another thing I would like to touch on in my opinion is a misunderstanding of Focus ST as a car because of the social media and YouTube people might have a wrong image about this car. As I've mentioned earlier many new owners are modifying them right away seeking more power and ignoring the handling and reliability. You see the Focus ST is a European type of car. It's small, it's nimble, it's quick, it shines in corners. The suspension and responsiveness are the biggest factors of this car. It doesn't really need more power. To be fair, I never drove a tuned Focus ST, but by looking at some dynographs of the most popular tuners out there, I realized that all they do is to increase that peak torque at low RPMs, and then after that, the curve gradually decreases. I'm not gonna say much about its interior. Everyone knows that it's not good. Ford will not watch my video and say, oh, let's stop making F-150s and let's invest more in compact cars we just got rid of because nobody buys them. That's not gonna happen. It's actually funny. When you accelerate hard, the dashboard starts to squeak and you feel like it's gonna come apart. All right, so the Veloster N. It is just such a nice car. You know, the Veloster N is pretty much everything a Focus ST isn't. I drove it a few months ago and I was very impressed. It's just such a great package. A complete package, if you will. Adaptive suspension, great exhaust, LSD, good power, rav match function, a shorter shifter. Even if the interior is plastic, it's a modern plastic. It doesn't look as dated as the Focus ST's interior looks. Also, the seating position is better. It looks like it's smaller than an ST, but it has just as much usable interior space like the ST does, if not more. Actually, if you're gonna take a look at the newest Focus ST available for Europe, you're gonna see that those two cars are pretty similar in their specs. So basically, by buying a Veloster N here in the United States, you're getting the European Focus ST. And boy, that LSD makes such a great difference. So to summarize my today's monologue, I'll say again that the Focus ST doesn't really need more power. And I realized that when I drove the 
2020 BMW 3 Series and the 2018 Audi A6. Both of these cars actually have very similar power, the difference being their transmission. Which brings me to the idea that it's much more important to be able to put down the power instead of increasing it. And really, if you want to get the best out of a 4-cylinder turbo, just go with a Golf GTI with a DSG. Really, it's quick, it's responsive, and you will really enjoy yourself while driving it in manual mode. I think manual transmission is one of the things that make the ST a special car, because this car is going to be just as fast as you are capable of operating a manual transmission. It means that if you're bad at downshifting, rev match, or hill toe, you're going to struggle. And this is where the Veloster's auto rev match will make a big difference for you, because it'll take away your lack of experience and really feel like you're a better driver. Traction is another topic to talk about when it comes to ST. I might be wrong, but I really never experienced any wheel hop everyone is talking about on the internet. Maybe the 17, 18 models have a revised rear motor mount. Besides that, a few months ago, I took my ST to the Tail of the Dragon and I had no issues with traction or corner grip. It's safe to say that before I got to the tail, I drove for about two hours and the outside temperature was around 60 degrees, so the tires were pretty warmed up. I understeered only once and that was my fault because I started to turn too late. The rest of the ride was great though. You really start noticing the lack of an LSD on daily basis in slippery conditions, in cold weather. This is where the Veloster N gave me a lot of confidence. It just pulls you out of any corner like nothing else. How relevant is a Focus ST in 2020? Well, it's really dated by today's standards. If you owned something similar in the past and you want to get a Focus ST, then I guess that's fine. Chances are you're going to be able to appreciate what this car was meant to be. If you're new to the hot hatch world, you should better get a Veloster N. And don't be cheap to add those extra money for the limited slip differential. It's going to make a big difference. Otherwise, if you live in a hot area and you don't have that many corners around, then maybe you don't even need a 4-cylinder turbo car and you will be better off with a Mustang. I really hope today's video helped those looking to buy an SD and help those who already own one. See you next time. What's up, you guys? This is... Okay. My folks, SD. The five things I wish I knew before I bought my SD. this video happen. This is sick. It's sick. For real. ST Sport.